George, the ADL is all over this summit. Explain, if you can, give us an overview sort of perspective. What is the ADL doing in this arena of trying to eradicate this hate-fueled extremism? So this summit, the Eradicate Hate Summit, is in many ways an embodiment or a showcase of the work that ADL does both nationally, regionally, and, and locally across the country every single day. You know, on any given day, ADL does three things. ADL investigates, ADL educates, and ADL advocates. And what we have here is really a convergence of all three of those pillars in some form or fashion. So ADL regional offices, our investigators, our researchers, and our educators are all here today to share our knowledge, best practices, lessons learned, and case studies from really the work that ADL does on the front lines, combating all forms of extremism and anti-Semitism across the country. I think a lot of people are not familiar with ADL's efforts in tracking these extremist groups. Can you go into that a little bit? So part of what we know historically about studying the patterns and trends of anti-Semitism is that many of the groups that have become household names today, the extremist, the anti-government, the militia style groups, the history of anti-Semitism in this country, you know, dates back decades. And ADL has been monitoring and tracking individuals and organizations and groups who espouse this type of, of vitriolic ideology. And we've been publicly reporting on it, sharing that information with law enforcement and public officials. And that work, that, that business, if you will, of ADL has quadrupled in the past, in recent years. And so part of what we're doing here at the Eradicate Hate Summit is sharing the frontline information, the research, the analysis um, on the information that we've gathered about these types of threats and also how we've worked cooperatively with law enforcement, public officials, and other civil society organizations to try to get ahead of or in front of these types of threats. Your efforts sound impressive, but also very expensive. They are, so ADL is, um, is both a, a small organization by some measures and large by others. Uh, ADL is about 25 regional offices across the United States. Um, and we have dozens of uh, individuals who work in our offices from Southern California to Boston and kind of everywhere in between. And ADL regional staff are really on the front lines of working with schools, with local law enforcement, with public officials on this intersection of anti-Semitism, hate extremism, but also more importantly, not just on reacting to it, but also proactively bringing communities together, trying to preemptively find solutions, create and enhance dialogue, and working to advocate for measures at the federal, state, and local leisure and local levels that bring communities closer together rather than pull them apart. You pick up all different types of hate, not just anti-Semitism, racism, and so on, correct? Correct. So AD, the mission of ADL, historically, the more than 100-year-old mission of ADL is to protect against the defamation of the Jewish people, part one, and relatedly work to secure justice and fair treatment for all communities. So this morning I was moderating the panel on the lessons learned from the horrific act of domestic terror in, at the Buffalo Top Supermarket in Buffalo, New York. And so that is a great example of an act of hate, an act of terror that ravaged the African-American community in Buffalo, New York. ADL was on the front lines of assisting with the response to that horrific attack because our mission and really our focus mandates it. And we know historically that incidents and acts of anti-Semitism are often really just the canary in the coal mine for other racial, ethnic, religious, or other minority communities that are being targeted. And so we really feel like ADL is very much in, in, in coalition with other communities that are targeted because of their race, religion, nationality, sexual orientation, or some other issue. Are there points of commonality between these various hate groups? Yeah, there, there is a lot of points in commonality. The first kind of key point is that they're all looking to grow. And so they're all looking to recruit and espouse their message more loudly. And so we know that there's a history of these groups and these individuals trying to use social media and other online platforms to grow their ranks, so to speak. And in many instances, they're competing for similar populations of people that could be predisposed or, or uh, interested in the type of ideology or advocacy that they're espousing. The second thing is, once their ideas are kind of put on online platforms, 
they go far wide and they do so very fast. And so part of the conversation here today at Eradicate Hate is what are some of the solutions, whether it's the, the live feed of a horrific attack of domestic terror like we've seen play out and we discussed this morning, or whether it's the content, the words, the manifestos, the ideologies, and how that goes from idea to someone espousing it and actually committing an act of terror. And, and we're trying to think through and work on all the creative ways to prevent and intervene that process of an idea going from online to someone acting on it. That's great. George, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us. Thank you for being here and thanks for all the great work of all our partners here at the Eradicate Hate Summit.